Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie and today I'm here with a review of one of my recently completed diamond painting projects as well as Diamond Art Club's new drill storage system. So I thought we could talk about both in this video since this is the drill storage I use to work with the diamonds for this particular kit and I'm looking forward to talking about both. So we'll start with uh, going through my thoughts on my diamond painting I have here. It is called Dragon. It was actually an untitled artwork actually. It's from the shop True Artist Diamond Painting, which is a small shop in the diamond painting community, and is by the artist Nathaniel Manns. So um, this was actually the dragon kit that I worked on for the month of July, so it's been a little bit since I finished it, but I do have my logbook here where I keep notes on things like the stats and what my, you know, things I love, things that I was met on, and any other notes that I have. So um, for example, <laughs> I started this kit on July 23rd and finished it on July 25th. It was a pretty quick, little kit and it was my 26th finish of the year it's nice and small it's 30 by 40 centimeters and has 30 colors and round diamonds and i like to rank my kits i started with this logbook ranking my kits on a scale as far as confetti and enjoyment goes and so confetti wise i ranked this a 7 out of 10 and enjoyment i ranked as a 7 out of 10 as well it was uh, decently high in confetti and but at the same time I really really enjoyed working on this kit a lot and I like how it turned out so um, let me kind of shift this out of the way and we can talk about this uh, a little bit more so you can kind of see but this like I said is a nice small snack size kit I have a feeling that's going to be an ongoing theme throughout the year 2024 honestly I'm gravitating towards these smaller kits a lot I decided to work on this one in July because at the time I was in the midst of working on a lot of larger scale projects and knew that I still wanted to get a dragon diamond painting in in July um, and I thought that this size would really be a, a good one to go with. I also have been trying to have a nice variety as far as different shops that I am working on, not just for my dragon diamond paintings, but here on my channel in general. If you're interested, I have a post review playlist that'll be linked below where I have done a lot of different review videos on various completed diamond painting projects on my channel from a really wide variety of companies. and. You know, that could be a good place to start if you're looking to maybe check out a different company and see if I have done a review on a kit from them. Um, hopefully you'll find that to be helpful. But I have completed one other kit from True Artist Diamond Painting. I don't remember the exact name, but it was a fox. And I absolutely adore how it turned out. If I, I'll do my best to remember to link to that post review in the um, description box below as well. But this kit was actually one of the, if not the very first kit that True Artist Diamond Painting uh, released when they opened. And I think that was back in 2021, maybe late 2020. I think it was in 2021. So um, they were one of the early on small shops to open the diamond painting world. They are still open, though I sometimes see their Etsy shop uh, go into vacation mode and so i'll just click the button that's like email me when they they come back um and so i'll have their etsy shop linked below i have not seen this particular artwork restocked but they have a lot of other really beautiful kits there and if you see some artwork that you like the look of hopefully my sharing my thoughts today will give you a sense for if that's something you want to try to pick up for yourself so um this doesn't have any special drills in it but i think that it still looks really good and um, I think there are easy places that you could add in special drills if you wanted to, like maybe some crystals uh, in here or something like that would be a nice addition. Uh, overall, I was pretty happy with the quality of the materials. Um, the canvas material was pretty good. The drill quality was good. I didn't have any static, which is always um, honestly quite refreshing. I know that static is mostly climate dependent and shops can't necessarily control whether or not their drills have static. But that being said, that doesn't mean that I am not happy or don't enjoy when a shop does have drills that I have no static. It was very quick and easy to kit up into my storage containers. Uh, now this kit did not come with a separate sticker sheet or separate legend. So I was just referring to the legends on the side of the canvas, which was initially, which was not at all a big deal because it's such a small canvas. It's not a, yeah, it didn't feel like a big deal to just like be able to look at the legends on either side. If you're looking and going, wait, your washi tape covers up the legends. How, like, how does that work? Well, there's a couple of different things you could do. 
What I ended up doing, I know I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm just gonna show you this, we're not gonna go into the review of the storage just yet, but what I ended up doing was just drawing the symbol. I am not an artist. It was, you know, not the, the most elegant of situations, but I, that's just what I went with and it works just fine. Something else you could do instead if you wanted is to uh, scan or take a picture of this legend print that out either directly onto sticker paper or take the regular paper, feed it through a sticker maker. There's a really, really inexpensive sticker maker I like to use that is the Xyron X150, I believe. And it's like 10 to $15 on Amazon. There's no batteries or anything involved. You just kind of feed the paper through and it comes out of sticker paper. And you could use that for labels. I've used that a lot before. Um, one of the things that I will often talk the most about when it comes to diamond paintings. One of the things that matters the most to me personally is the rendering. How does it look finished? How do I feel like the original artwork translates into diamond painting, painting form just based on how the shop has done it, whatever their process looks like. Um, and this one I was pretty happy with. Um, I do feel like there are some areas I would have loved to see a little bit more clarity in the rendering. For example, um, like the lines on the dragon's belly here, it would have been nice to see this cleaned up and maybe have some distinct lines. Uh, same up here. Uh, there is quite a lot of confetti in this piece. When I initially looked at the canvas, when I unboxed it, and I think even when I showed you guys this canvas and talked about it, I think when I did a kit up video, I think I commented something along the lines of, oh, this looks like it has a lot of color blocking. It's gonna move right along. Um, I don't know what audacity I was <laughs> in in the midst of at the moment, but uh, no, this was this was very very confetti heavy, and uh, so that means that there were a lot of areas that had a little bit of a softer rendering. If you look up close, you can see some of the shading going from the light colors to this dark background color. There will be various shades of like dark blue in there that are in those transition colors. So there are definitely parts of this that have a softer rendering style. Um, but I think the original artwork still does come through. It just, I think what happened was <laughs> there are parts of the background, like this color, I think that's 939. I don't think it's 310. Um, yeah, that's a dark blue back here, not not black. Um, I saw this and there are some color blocked areas of this dark background color, but then the rest of it is honestly pretty confetti heavy. So it was just a little bit different than I had expected and I guess I just didn't look close enough at the canvas. That being said, I'm okay with confetti if I still like the way that this uh, turned out. Personally, I do, like I said, I do think this would have benefited from maybe a little bit more um, cleaning up. I think just a little bit of cleaner lines, maybe in like in the dragon's eye or something like that. Some of these lines, I think it could have benefited from, um, yeah, just a little bit more clarity and detail. Still though, I tend to give a lot of grace when it comes to things like keeping in mind that this was the very first kit or the it was in the very first run of kits, if not the first kit that True Artist Diamond Painting released. I give tons of grace <laughs> and I had an amazing experience with the other kit that I worked on from them that was a later release, the Fox that I mentioned. And so I am not looking at this and going, okay, I'm holding this against the company because I I do think it turned out still really cute and you know I, I'll give grace you don't necessarily have to like you could still make a decision um based on your own personal preferences but I I feel like they did make some you know some tweaks and improvements after that first run of kits so um I do like how this turned out. I think it's really pretty. It's really cute. Um, there were a couple areas. I was just looking at my notes really quick to remind myself. Uh, there were a couple of spots where it felt like the canvas just didn't quite want to lay perfectly flat. Um, but that could in part be because of how I had this stored. I thought I had it rolled, but it got a little bit squished. And so I think some of the creases may have gotten just like a little bit inset. You could just see slight lines there and that's exactly how it was kind of just pushed together. So I could put this under something heavy and it would probably help it lay completely flat, especially if I were going to display it. I don't display completed diamond paintings in my home. I typically just enjoy the process of working on them and trying out different companies. So not a big deal to me, but I did want to mention it because I'm trying to give you guys a really comprehensive overview of this, of this kit. So, um, 
what else is in my notes? I um, I think their customer service is really good. The shop owner has always been incredibly sweet and kind whenever I've uh, corresponded with her. Um, and I love supporting small shops, of course. I, you'll hopefully see a nice variety of that here on my channel. And then just on a personal note, um, I mentioned earlier about how at the time that I was working on this at the end of July, I was otherwise in the midst of working on a lot of large and confetti heavy square drill kits. So this was a breath of fresh air. It was so fun to start a kit that I finished in just a couple of days. Um, the materials were so nice to work with that it just was, it felt very relaxing uh, to work on, honestly. So um, loved that about this kit and yeah, so that was my dragon kit from True Artist Diamond Painting. Even though this artwork, at least as of the time of this posting, I haven't seen it restocked since that initial run, I still hope that this video, this review has given you a sense for maybe what to expect from this company in general. So if you were to go and look at the artwork that they do have available, you would still hopefully get a sense for, you know, what to expect for the quality materials, maybe the overall rendering style, what your customer service experience might be like if you have any issues, those sorts of things. Um, and that's really, that's what my goal is. So um, I'm going to just move this over to the side and I'd love to talk for just a few minutes about Diamond Art Club's new drill storage system. So um, I did end up using this with this kit because this was right after it had been released. Uh, full disclosure, because really want to make sure you know this diamond art club did send this to me um they didn't tell me that i had to use it or even that i had to unbox it on my channel they're just like hey here's this if you would like to test it out we'd love to hear your feedback i did send them some feedback immediately <laughs> just fyi um and so that being said like they didn't tell me what i had to do with it but it was still sent to me and i want to make sure you know that i'm still going to do my best here to give you um just very straightforward side by sides i grabbed um the Elizabeth Ward style of storage that is more widely known and so we could do some side by sides and I'll also just talk about my experience of working on this. So or working with these rather. So this is kind of the standard initial set that it comes with. It comes with three different sizes of drill storage. Um, it comes with, we'll say this one is the small size and then this one is the medium size and then this one is the large size. So just these three sizes and the way that they sit in the drill, uh, in the tray is different as well. Um, as opposed to, you know what? Let me just get this and put it side by side because it'll be easier. <laughs> Uh, so here's the Elizabeth Ward. Here's the Diamond Art Club ones. Um, the way that these sit in the tray is different. The height on these is very different as well. The Diamond Art Club one is much taller. Um, I could actually give you exact dimensions if you are interested. So if we are, hold on, let's do this a smart way. Let's not make a mess. Okay. So in centimeters, we're talking uh, about six centimeters like it's all the way to the bottom there. In inches, that's a mm, bit over two. By comparison, Elizabeth Ward storage. By the way, when I say Elizabeth Ward, that is a catch-all phrase for, uh, there's the Elizabeth Ward brand. There's also a million other like, uh, like names that this falls under. I don't know who the parent manufacturer is for all of these, but when I say Elizabeth Ward, this is like Elizabeth Ward, um, Darice, Case Defy, Joann's, and Michael's store brands. It's like Hildy and Joe, and then something else. There's a bunch there, and, and honestly, they're all basically identical for me, aside from maybe some tray style things. I think like this specific tray and lid is not what you would get if you got Elizabeth Ward from Amazon. Um, this might be. I don't know if this is the case to Fi or the Hildy and Joe from um, Michael's. I don't remember. But anyway, it's they're indis virtually indistinguishable to me. And so they're intermixed. The containers that are in here could be any one of those half a dozen brand names. So just when I say Elizabeth Ward, it's just the catch all phrase. So anyway, okay, okay. So this was what, six ish centimeters on the Diamond Art Club. And then on the Elizabeth Ward, it's. Um, around four centimeters so in inches it's like one and a half inches so it's a big height difference and um let's see this way we're at 34 centimeters and then width wise we're at about 30 centimeters height wise we're at 
uh, 26 and a half, 26 and a quarter centimeters. And this one is 29 centimeters. So that's the difference in terms of like the sizes with the trays. And then most glaring difference, and I'm sure you've already seen, is that the Diamond Art Club uh, containers sit sideways or sit like up and down. So these sit flat, these sit vertical. So as opposed to them sitting like this in the tray. Um, biggest difference and major feedback that I gave to Diamond Art Club was I want small size containers, like the extra small, because the small size container that the Diamond Art Club ones have is the size, which is roughly equal in size to um, the second smallest Elizabeth Ward container. I want Diamond Art Club to release ones that are the smallest size. I use these a lot. And so um, my understanding is they are planning to come out with a smaller size. I don't know how that's going to work with how they do the um, labels on the end, which technically you could fit the Diamond Art Club size label down here on this part. It's kind of like that cutout is where you could put it. Um, and so if they make an even smaller one, I don't know how that's going to work with how big this, this part is like, I don't know. I just, they, they're going to have to modify it and you'd almost have to put the sticker label right on there. So I, you know, that is one thing. If you're interested, yes, the smallest size Elizabeth Ward containers, you could set it in there. <laughs> like it absolutely fits. And I feel like you could mix and match if you wanted to. I, why not? There's no one that says you can't. <laughs> so um, that's something you can definitely do. Um, the large size Elizabeth Ward containers are larger than the largest size Diamond Art Club containers. That is a difference as well. But the other two sizes are about the, you know, roughly equivalent to each other. Um, what did I think about working with the, these containers like this? It was different. I... I don't know. So here's the thing. I've been working with the Elizabeth Ward style containers for four and a half years and the Diamond Art Club ones I've done one kit. So honestly, my preference is going to be the Elizabeth Ward style because it's what I know. I sort of, I like the number of containers I can fit in here. I like that they offer the small ones and I kind of like that they lay flat like this. And, um, the Diamond Art Club ones though, it is interesting with them being stored vertical like this. I think you could, especially if they add in the smaller containers, I feel like you could potentially fit more containers and colors in this one. Like, and by sheer volume, number of drills you could fit in here, like that might, that might, you know, work in its favor. But the thing is like, I'm trying to think how to put this. I own probably 10 Elizabeth Ward or any of the half dozen off brand names of trays um, that I mix and match. And I don't personally see myself switching over to Diamond Art Clubs when I've already like invested, like I'm not just gonna throw away the Elizabeth Ward ones. Um, I ha But I have like a random mix of a dozen other drill storage options that sometimes I will reach for, sometimes just to um, keep it fresh and make sure I'm sharing with you guys different storage systems that are out there. Uh, sometimes I just, I like the configuration of or whatever that storage system has to offer. And so for me, I think the Diamond Art Club one is just going to kind of go in that rotation of ones that I just rotate in every once in a while. And if the kit I want to work on has the right number of colors that would fit in this configuration, um, great. Then that's, you know, that would work in its favor and, uh, continuing to work with it to see, okay, is this something that, so I want to get another set so that I can intermix a little bit. Um, but the reality is after four and a half years where I already have a bunch of these, I'm not going to be investing in switching over all to Diamond Art Club. It just doesn't make sense financially for me. That being said, finances, the financial price point is a big difference. Um, but there is an update since the last time I talked about this, like in, a, I think I talked about it in my kit up and chat maybe. So the Elizabeth Ward containers, they will vary in price wildly. If you get the Elizabeth Ward brand on Amazon, the lowest I've seen them go on sale for is around 20 to $22. And that is low. Typically the, the more sort of standard sale price you'll see, I feel like is 24 to $26 for, um, a set. The Diamond Art Club ones on the Diamond Art Club website were like 40, was it 45? It was a lot more expensive. Um, however, I did see as of a few weeks ago, they added these sets to the Amazon store, their Amazon storefront. And 
I feel like since they launched there, they have had a 20% off coupon attached to it. I'm guessing it has something to do with the cost of like logistics and shipping, like the sheer cost of shipping these directly from Diamond Art Club's warehouse, I would guess is pretty cost prohibitive. Um, but maybe from Amazon, they're able to streamline a little bit more. So just being <laughs> honest with you, I'm gonna point you to Amazon, like check and see if they've got a 20% off coupon on these. I would imagine we might see them even like, maybe they'll go on sale for Black Friday on the Amazon website or something. That's the route that I would go because $45 for this set, I feel like I just, I can't justify it. Um, there's a lot of things that I like about it. As far as what I feel like this does a little bit better, a lot of it's just gonna be personal preference. Like, do you like having your drills sitting up this way? Um, but also, one thing I did notice is I kind of like the, it's almost like a, this feels softer, but sturdier. Like it feels like this is more secure than the Elizabeth Ward ones typically are. Um, I would guess it's because this is so much wider, but this is just, it's a little bit flimsier. Um, not that it's like, these are always falling apart, but they're just, this feels like there's just a little bit more to it. There's like just a little bit more to it. Um, and these, I don't really think these come out the same way the Elizabeth Ward ones can pull out, the lid tops do. Um, one thing I did notice is if you like to wear artificial nails, I've been in a phase where I have not wanted artificial nails on my fingernails at all. It's a sensory thing at the moment. But um, if you are wearing artificial nails, I feel like these would be, these are harder to open. I did grab, I remember testing it to see like, cause with Elizabeth Ward, flatten into tweezers, pop it right open. It's super easy. Diamond Art Club. I can't, I can't get the flat end of the tweezers under this. I did get the pointy end under, well, I did. You can get like one end of your pointy, of the pointy ends. And then like, you could pop it open that way, but I'm worried that I'm gonna start like scratching this up and stuff. So I think I saw some people in one of the Facebook groups saying something about using that Lego tool to open up these, like the ones that separates Legos. I don't, my kids have them somewhere in their stacks of Legos. I don't, I, I didn't try to dig one up, but apparently, hypothetically, it's a rumor that you could use those to open up these containers. So I know it sounds like I'm probably doing a lot of like, not impressed with the Diamond Art Club ones. I just, I, you know, I like them. For me, the problem is just the price point and the fact that I'm already really well established with what I have. If you don't have a bunch of drill storage already, um, and you can get it on sale and you kind of like the way that this is laid out, sure, give it a try. Why not? Especially if you're like, hey, you can get me to a free, or maybe if it's on the Diamond Art Club website, maybe it gets you to a free shipping threshold or something like that. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was fine. I, um, I don't know if I have any other major thoughts to share on that, but I did want to uh, revisit my kind of thoughts on it because I did initial thoughts when I opened it up. I wanted to revisit my thoughts on it now having worked with it uh, on a kit. So I could be like, okay, I worked with it. Here were kind of the pros and cons. You know, no, nothing, nothing that was major to note other than what I've kind of already covered. So I hope that was helpful as far as getting to kind of see some side-by-sides and hear my thoughts on it. Um, it's, it's a nice quality. Like overall, the quality feels good. Uh, a lot of people, some people don't care. I don't know if it's a lot or if it's just some. Don't care for the color pink, but I'm a pink girly, so it's <laughs> no complaints from me. And they will be stackable. Um, like you could definitely stack them on top of each other and there's kind of this cutout portion. So in concept, they could work pretty similar to Elizabeth Ward and work better than a lot of other storage uh, systems that are out there that are not stackable, but at least like, yeah, Diamond Art Club and Elizabeth Ward's, those both have that uh, going in their favor. Um, that being said, that's kind of the end of this double review video of the uh, Dragon Kit from True Artist Diamond Painting and the new drill storage from Diamond Art Club. They have said that they've, uh, they're have they pretty receptive to feedback, by the way. They already have plans to release, I think, the smaller, the small, a smaller version of the containers, as well as I think they're going to try to release the containers individually. So you can buy ones to kind of swap in. I, I would like to see if maybe they would offer, I don't know if this works logistically, like offer different configuration options for the trays too, where it's like, 
maybe it's all small containers or it's all, you know, medium or large, but I don't know if that's really practical, but it's just a, an idea. So if you have thoughts on, on that, um, if you've worked with these and you have thoughts, send them over to diamond art club, they're trying to take it into account and, and listen to all that feedback. So, and then check out true artist diamond painting, please. Like I said, they do often put their shop in vacation mode. I think catch up on orders and stuff. So if that's the case, um, when, when you're watching this video and you go to click over, I would just sign up for the email notification for when they come back and love supporting small businesses in the diamond painting world and uh, hoping to you know check out another kit from True Artist Diamond Painting again, again soon. So thanks for joining me. Also, please let me know what you think as far as, have you tried out the Diamond Art Club storage containers? Have you tried a kit from True Artist Diamond Painting before? And just, or what are your thoughts as far as what I've shared with you on these today? I look forward to reading your comments and hearing what your thoughts are. But yeah, I'm gonna let you go. Please subscribe if you wanna see more reviews and uh, I do weekly whipping chats, tutorials, unboxings, all things diamond painting related here and would love to have you here. But I'm gonna let you go. So have a day and a week that's as amazing as you are and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.